Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Midpoint. I'm your girl Daylon, aka Aglae. In this video, I'm going to be talking about three, there's more than three, but three ways that has helped me to always stay connected or always to reconnect with my higher self. Stay tuned. you guys so the first thing is meditation meditation you guys always hear about meditation i'm sure you're probably tired of hearing about meditation but to be honest with all the self-awareness self-help occult <laughs> uh self-assessment self-realization tools out there meditation is by far one of the only ones that i've definitely kept up for a long time i think it's been possibly about seven eight years now okay eight years it doesn't matter how you do it you could walk there's walking meditations there is sitting meditations they're lying down meditations you could listen to music and meditate okay um, you could focus on your breath and meditate. You could do a mantra and meditate. Whatever works for you, whatever helps you. And every time I meditate, it really helps me to just center myself and really helps me to pay attention to all the thoughts that are clogging my mind because literally that's what is going on. <laughs> it allows me to like slow down sometimes. And when I can slow down, I can actually be present with myself. I could appreciate myself. I could take care or listen to what my body wants me to know or um, listen to my breath listen to my heartbeat i could really just observe the thoughts that are coming into my mind instead of me just focusing on it so much where i'm constantly anxious or i get depressed and then i start building on that and the ego takes over listen it's a whole thing we're not trying to get into that <laughs> The whole point of meditation for me is to really help me to reconnect to my higher self, really help me to connect to source, connect to a bigger feeling of myself, which then makes me feel really small and then allows me to ground my energy and be present. When I can be present, I could slow things down because then I'm not running around trying to, you know, complete some type of deadline, a project, trying to do this, trying to do that. I can actually really just connect and be present. With this world moving so quickly, with people's attention span, not even being able to listen to a minute video or more, it's evident that we all need to slow down. Not everybody's gonna hear this message and this isn't for everybody. And to be honest, I'm fine with that. I'm not here for everybody. I'm here for myself and whoever's inspired, they could do something with that for themselves, okay? If it's if it's an inspiration to ignite something within their own life, I'm, I'm happy for that. And if that's just one person, great. If it's a million people, awesome. But meditation will really help you to just take a seat and really be present with yourself, okay? Whenever you're just overwhelmed, you have too much going on, even if you're just trying to like understand something and you need to get an answer, maybe you're trying to look up for an answer, ask people for an answer. Meditation has also helped me to really tap into my inner self, my inner voice, to allow that to get that louder. Because I don't know about you guys, but growing up, I realized that I was always asking for advice, always asking for validation, either from someone that I feel like makes better choices in their life, a family, a friend you know, a lover, whatever it could have been. But all that does is just diminishes our own inner voice. And we really want to be able to tap in because when we're, we tap in deeper into our inner voice, we're able to actually hear the direction and the instruction for our own journey. Then we could actually honor our own journey because whatever someone else says or does, you're the one that's gonna take the final action. So you better be okay with what they tell you to do because if you run off the cliff, it's gonna be your fault because you had the opportunity to really tap into yourself and confirm if that's the way you need to go or not. So always try to take some time out, even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. I love to do an hour sometimes. I have the intention just to do five minutes and it turns out to be 45 minutes. Honor that. Don't be such in a rush to come out of it unless you have appointments, of course. But <laughs> make sure you take out some time for yourself. You're the most important part. You're the most important character. You're the most important piece in your day. If you're not there for your day and in your day, 
then there is no day, okay? Number two, this is something that I've always read about and up until a few years ago, um, I started to implement this. Um, a partner of mine at the time, they were doing this and then I learned that it's really beneficial and it allows me to really um, become very still and that's reflection. You always wanna sit either at the end of the day or the first thing in the morning and reflect on how um, you showed up for yourself either the day before or if you're doing it at that the end of the night for that entire day, right? You want to reflect on how you showed up that day. You may want to um, tweak some of those things. So what I would do is I would jot down everything that I did for the day, um, everything that I, how I felt, every emotion that I felt for the day during those things. And then I always also ask myself, was there a better way that I could have showed up? Um, am I satisfied with the way that I showed up and how could I show up better? You know, um, I acknowledge all of those things about myself. You really want to do self-reflection because it really allows you to position yourself every day to not only remind yourself that you get to show up more powerfully for yourself in every situation, but also it definitely helps with self-assessment and self-development. So you could just get better every day, every moment. There's nothing wrong with you. Okay, but if there are some places in your life that you want to improve, it definitely helps to do some self-reflection. Lastly, number three, gratitude. Now, gratitude really helps me a lot to get out of my ego because there could be so many times when you feel like, man, I would love to have this or I need to take care of this or I'd love to have that or I need this, I need that. And I feel like that comes from just being in a culture where you always just want and want and want and want. When I go back towards my pay stubs, I realize, man, I wasted a lot of money on a lot of things that I did use, but it's just a lot of unnecessary things when it comes to really understanding the importance of getting the things that you need and not necessarily just constantly buying things that you want. I had to come to terms to that. Um, and unfortunately for me, I came to terms to, uh, to that understanding and awareness when money was low, but it still allowed me to be in the attitude of gratitude because I was able to learn the lesson. Just like any type of past heartbreaks, um, any type of situations that it led to some type of um, result that I didn't like, right? I was able to be grateful because it allowed me to realize that I get to choose myself, you know, I get to not neglect myself. I get to put myself first. I get to be grateful for the smallest things that I have and that a lot of us, a lot of people take for granted. Um, my breath, you know, the ability to walk, my knees, my hands and fingers are working perfectly fine for my brain, for my heart, you know, um, for my laptop, my phone, for Wi-Fi, for running water. I like the list of things that I could be grateful for would definitely run more than two to three pages. And whenever I write those things down, it really opens up my eyes to see how many things that people take for granted. Because when you go to other places, other countries, a lot of these places, they don't have these simple things, you know, and gratitude really helps me to just connect with my higher self. And when you're in an attitude and in a state of vibrating at a frequency of gratitude, you're signaling outside of yourself of saying, I am grateful. I understand that everything that I've had and everything that I have and every, everything that I will have are all experiences and are all things that I'm honored to have experience, you know, and I'm open to receiving even more experiences. That's what being in the art of gratitude, being in the art, I'm sorry, <laughs> being in the attitude and the vibrational frequency of gratitude will do for you. So whenever you feel lack in anything, make a list of a hundred things that you could be grateful for and i know a hundred seems like a lot but trust me you could be grateful for your thumb your fingers your pinky toe your kneecaps okay you could be grateful for your thighs your braids all right you could be grateful for your eyesight your breath the ability to speak some of you many languages so i'm telling you that list will be more than a hundred just Challenge yourself and see what comes up. And you don't have to do 100. You could do 5. You could do 10. But the whole point is to start getting into documenting what it is that you're, grat what, what it is that you're grateful for on a daily basis. Because only then I feel like we could really open up ourselves to allow new beautiful experiences to come in. 
And patience is going to test you. But just know, just as quick as some of these things came in, is also just as quick as they have gone out. Some things lasted a little bit longer, but we get to appreciate them while they are here and also while they are gone. Because it's not guaranteed that you'll get an opportunity to have them again. All right? But you also get to put yourself in a position and in a frequency and awareness of knowing that I could receive and I could experience all the greatest things that I want in my life. And I'm okay if they don't come when I want them to come. And I'm also okay if they don't come because I know that I can experience them in my mind. And if you guys understand the power of this hermetic principles in the first universal law, which states that, um, which is the law of mentalism and states that all is mine, then you get to realize that you can actually have all the experiences that you want in your mind first. And to be honest, that is where you want to even create you even want to create the experience before you even have it physically. Okay, so play with that. I hope this video helped you. I hope you guys implement some of these things. It doesn't have to take much in your day, but it also helps you to reconnect with your higher self if that is a goal of yours, okay? Without any further ado, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like, subscribe if you feel like this resonates with you or this channel resonates with you. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Oh,